Today we're going to be making some mulled wine. Yay! So if you want to follow along and perhaps make your own, these are the ingredients that you will need. One litre of water, two bottles of red wine, 100 to 120 grams of caster sugar, three oranges, one lemon's worth of peel, or one lemon peel, four cinnamon sticks, one nutmeg, just a grating, not the whole thing, not unless you want to die of six cardamom pods, four star anise, a pinch of ground cloves, a pinch of salt, and currants. Step one, what you're going to want to do is boil all your spices in with a third of the bottle of red wine and a litre of water, a bit of sugar. This allows the flavour of the spices infused into the wine without losing the alcoholic content of the rest of the wine. So, stage one, dry toast your spices. This will maximise their flavour. So we have the star anise going in, and your six cardamom pods, your cinnamon, ideally you want four, but we've only got three. <laughs> so the idea behind this, as described, is to release the flavours from the spice by toasting them. Uh, you don't want to be using oil for this, because it will make your malt wine oily. Um, so just leave them on a medium heat, they should start to smell really tasty. Give them a shake just to keep them from burning. This won't need to take long, a couple of minutes. One quick amendment, we are going to be adding the citrus peel to the initial boil. It's very simple, while your spices are dry toasting, use a speed peeler, get strips off, don't press too hard, you don't want any of that white stuff in there because it's bitter. just going to weigh out the sugar we're going to start with 100 grams and then if we need more we can add more well, I'm gonna go right ahead and up the currants and then we're going to turn the heat on to a boil Okay, so at this point you're making what's essentially a winter spiced sugar syrup. So you just need to leave this to soft boil for 5 to 10 minutes. <laughs> so we've got a momentary problem in that um, we have no bottle opener, so mulled wine without the wine. Crisis averted, we have a corkscrew so we can actually continue with the mulled wine. Be down. Wouldn't have thought so, no, because. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Even that's cheering. So, after easily opening your bottle of wine with the corkscrew that you had prepared earlier, you simply add a third of the bottle of the red wine in with your oiled spices. That's roughly a third. Then you want to add all your juice and your oranges, so very simply just cut each orange in half. No one really needs to be told how to cut an orange in half, but we don't know who's watching this. And this kind of thing, ideal, get this from any cook shop, hardware store, perhaps even some large supermarkets. Or a power plant. And don't be afraid to give it a second go. Add the juice in the pan. I'll simmer this for another five minutes now the wine and the juice have gone in. How do you...? 
the meantime, you can attempt to open the second bottle of wine. Am I doing it wrong? <laughs> Always a good idea to keep your corks. Put in a bit of cloves now, a quarter of a teaspoon. Your nutmeg. You can always add a bit more later. <sighs> Smell that. Have the rest of the wine. to hang on to your bottles because when the old wine's done you're going to want to store it somewhere. Can't drink it all. At this point you want to turn the heat down. You want it to simmer otherwise you'll boil away all the alcohol. I'd suggest a medium to low heat. We're going for an initial taste. I'm not expecting this to be what the final product's like but it's always good to sort of get to know the quality of your wine. In this case it's quite shit because it came from little. So I'm just going to add the extra sugar I mentioned now, so you'll be nice and hygienic in the kitchen. In an ideal world, we'll be using spoons, but this isn't an ideal world, is it? You know. So you're going to want to leave that to simmer for two hours. Um, might be a good time to put your Christmas tree up, um, start a game of Monopoly. Um, Let's get back to the mulled wine. <laughs> Smells really good actually. Okay, so this has been simmering for the full two hours. Um, so we're going to give it a taste. Yes, they're wet. Um, there's a good reason for that. It's not the fucking BBC. We just wash them. Star anise in each. In the absence of orange, I have to use a satsuma, which helpfully pre-rolled itself towards me as I pulled the chopping board back. Chunky slice in there, like so. Use a ladle, safest way. Could be here a while. Plenty, I think. Still got plenty up to do. And there you go, two lovely festive glasses of mulled wine. Mm -hmm. Short of blending up Santa's innards, this is the most Christmassy thing you could put in a glass. So there's one final thing left to do, and that's tasting. Here we go, cheers. Cheers. Oh. Thoughts? Good. <laughs> Bit hot. <laughs> That's tasty actually. Really nice. I'd recommend that for, you know, when you want to make a cheap gift for someone that you don't really want to spend much on. Well, just because you're getting the bottle. <laughs> Fucking hell. Okay, so we've tasted our glasses. Delicious. Um, leave it overnight. Not only to cool down, but just to get that final infusion going. Then strain it into a jug, decant it back into a bottle by the cork. Yeah. And um, gifts are good. Happy Christmas to one and all. Oh, oh, oh. Don't worry, you don't have to watch us drink a whole lot. You can. It's, uh... <laughs> it's entertaining, isn't it? Yeah, I, I will keep going. Yeah. I bet you're wishing you had some. Only five swigs left.
Happy Christmas.